In this demo, we are going to show how easy it can be to resolve a typical data quality problem, where you may have a large amount of data you would like to utilize, but the quality of the data is unknown. Before the data can be used for business intelligence, analytics, or AI, you'll need to ensure the data is trusted, and we'll demonstrate how this can be achieved using IBM InfoSphere Information Server 1171. Let's start with a set of data folders that our data analyst has been tasked with analyzing. In this case, the data files are on an HDFS file server, so we start by selecting the Run Discovery on our file server. We then choose our Discovery Root Path, which enables us to discover any data that may be in that root path or its subdirectories. We then choose our Discovery options, including doing the automatic assignment of terms. Lastly, we choose our logical data host to organize our imported metadata, and we choose a workspace to hold our analysis results. And with that, we are ready to run Discovery. And now that Discovery has completed, let's start with a workspace dashboard showing a summary of the data that was analyzed. The top row visuals show the count of data sets that met the configured data quality threshold and the range of data quality scores, but for now let's take a look at our data sets. Here we can see that six files, aka data sets, and three folders were analyzed with varying data quality scores above the 95% data quality threshold. Now let's take a look at the account holders data set. In the column summary screen, we have a high level view of the analysis results. We could see that the majority of terms were assigned automatically as part of the analysis. For columns that didn't have terms automatically assigned, we can assign the term manually. So we'll select the column account holder ID in the columns list. Then we'll go to the governance section and we'll turn on edit mode and assign the term customer identifier. Next, we'll go back to the columns view and take a look at the data quality summary. Here we see all the data quality dimensions that are being used in this workspace and all the columns which have violations for the given data quality dimension. And from here we can also drill down on individual columns to see the actual violation records. Now let's take a look at the individual columns to do a closer inspection. We'll start with the account holder ID column and take a look at the format summary of the column values. Here we see that the format varies from one to four digits. However, for this column, we want all values to have four digits, so we'll mark the other formats as invalid. Next, we'll do a closer inspection of the contact column. In the data class summary, we see that the values can be either a phone number or an email address, so let's create a quality rule to ensure that the values populated into this column have a proper email or phone number format. So let's build our quality rule. We already have a published rule definition that uses regular expressions to validate that a value conforms to an email or phone number format. There's one variable in the rule definition and we'll bind the contact column to that variable. Then we'll save our quality rule and it'll be used when running data quality analysis. Now that we've made some adjustments, let's run data quality analysis and see the impact of those changes. We'll go back to the data sets view and run data quality analysis on the account holder's data set. Once the analysis completes, we can see that our changes have led to a lower data quality score. And we can also see that our dashboard has been updated to reflect that. And from the dashboard, we can take a look at the data sets that are below the data quality threshold. Let's take a closer look and see how our changes impacted the data quality score for this data set. For the account holder ID column, we could see that the data quality score has dropped to 65%. And when we take a look at the data quality summary, we could see that we now have 1,000 records that violated the format data quality dimension. For the contact column, we could see that adding a data quality rule has dropped the data quality score to 83%. In the data quality summary, there is a new data quality dimension for the quality rule. And there are a number of violations, which we can drill into to see the failed records. We can also evaluate data quality using data rules that run independently. 
So let's take a look at some other columns. For the age column, we review the formats and see that there are some values with single digits. As there is a minimum age requirement for the records in this column, let's create a data rule to flag those records which don't meet this requirement. We already have a published rule definition for the minimum age requirement, so we'll create a data rule in our workspace. We'll provide a name for our data rule and then we'll bind the column to the rule variable. As we are not using columns for multiple data sets, we don't need to configure joins, and we'll use the default options for the output table content and records. And that should be enough to create and save the data rule. And now if we go to the rules section of the contact column, we can see the data rule we just created, and we can run it right from here. While that data rule is running, let's create another data rule. For the profession column, we see that there are some suspect values. We have a reference list of valid values for this column, so let's create a data rule that validates the values in the column against that reference list. We already have a published rule definition that uses the reference list, so let's create another data rule in our workspace. As before, we'll provide a name for our data rule, and then we'll bind the column to the rule variable. And again, we'll just go with the defaults for the other options to configure and save our rule. Our data rule is ready to run, so let's run it. And while this data rule runs, let's take a look at the results of the first data rule. We'll go back to the age column and go to the data rules section. From there, we can choose to view the run history, and that will take us to the run history view which shows us a history of each time the data rule was run. And we can drill into each of those runs to view the analysis details. And here we see the exception records that fell below the minimum requirement age of 18. We can also work with data rules by going to the data rules main section that can be accessed from the workspace dashboard. So let's take a look at what we have there. And here are the rule definitions and data rules that we created earlier. In this case, we're going to view the run history of our second data rule from this view. And here are the exception records. We can see that the values do not match the expected values in the rule definition reference list. And we can see the summary statistics and details for this particular analysis run. Next, we move on to relationship analysis, which can also be accessed from the workspace dashboard. Relationship analysis allows us to identify potential primary key foreign key relationships, as well as identifying columns with potentially redundant overlapping values. Let's take a look at the three data sets in our Bank 3 folder to see if there are any relationships between them. We'll select our three data sets and then select Run Relationship Analysis. We do have the option to identify potential multi-column key candidates. Once Relationship Analysis completes, there is a visual representation of the relationships which were found. And by selecting the relationship visual element, we could see the primary key foreign key details in the table below. Lastly, we end up back at our dashboard, and we could see that things are starting to get more interesting, such as an overview of the number of data sets which have good and bad data quality, the types of analysis that have been run, and potential relationships which have been found. And that concludes this demo, showing how easy it is to use the IBM InfoSphere Information Server Quality Experience 
to create trusted business data that can now be utilized for business intelligence, analytics, or AI. For a complete list of new features in IBM Infosphere Information Server version 11.7.1, go to the following URL. Thank you.